Hello and welcome to another video. Today's episode is another episode in the series where we take a deep dive into the Arch Linux installation process and trying to understand what exactly we are doing when we are installing Arch Linux. And so we are continuing with the configuration of the system. So what is the next step? So previously we already so installed the main packages and if you haven't seen those videos, I strongly suggest you to check out the playlist with the understanding the Arch Linux installation. And if you are interested in this deep dive, then I suggest you to subscribe to this channel so you will be notified when the new videos about the next steps will come out. So we already installed the main packages and we chroot into the system and set up the time zones and we are going to uh, focus on localization. So in terms of the um, Arch Linux wiki, which so this is the um, installation guide on the Arch wiki, which is the document that you should be following when you are installing your own system. So this video is informational. This video is a kind of a um, and just uh, helping you to understand what is exactly the process. But when you are installing your system, system uh, it's so I strongly suggest follow the official installation guide because whenever something is changed in the process, this installation guide will reflect that and my video won't change. So be aware of that. And so we installed and we are configuring down the system and going to the localization part. So if I pull up my virtual machine here, you can see that uh, mounted the system uh, folders and I did this to root step. So uh, if you are installing your system right now, for example, then you've already set up your time zone and you shouldn't have not uh, exited the to root environment. So this is kind of the step where we are picking up in today's video. So let's uh, go back to our little uh, slideshow here. So what is the localization? So why do we have to do this? So basically there are many, many different languages and uh, cultures on the face of this planet. And Linux is uh, built in a way that it should be for everyone, no matter what languages you speak. So if you don't speak English or if English is only your second language and you are more comfortable using your system in other languages, you should be able to do that and localization gives a very good uh, way dealing with that. So besides language, so different cultures use different things like for this 10,210.14, it can be written in different ways. So this is uh, what most English speakers will be um, familiar with. So we use the period or full stop sign as for like, signifying that these are, these are the whole numbers and these are the decimal fractions. But in a lot of other languages, like in, in Europe, a lot of places they use the comma for signifying the decimal digits. And sometimes we use a space or sometimes we use the dot between the thousands or like the groupings of the three digits. So it can be different and everyone knows that the dates can be written in a, uh, in a many, many different ways. And also things like how you order the letters of the alphabet, even that can be different. And uh, so if you want to have a, a, a little more detailed look, the ArchWiki has a article on locales and it describes a lot about how to operate with them because in some cases you will have to do this not just during installation but maybe on an installed system like uh, you are picking up a new language and you want to use sometimes the third language for example or fourth language and you want to change the localization of your system that can be possible uh, that is possible and this uh, page will tell you how to do that but it also gives us some interesting things so because this Linux likes to be flexible and modular. So we have a lot of different variables that can be defined. 
So you could be using a different language and uh, for, for the system and a different language for like the uh, date time or something. And here we can get some uh, description of that. Like, uh, what, for example, the language can, like uh, the other programs can just take a look at this language variable and use the appropriate language or the time format or collate. This is how to alphabetically order things. And so actually, I have uh, prepared something here. So if I go to my console, we can see that if I'll just list uh, all the files, these are now organized by the, so my default language is English, so everything is set up for English, except I think maybe dates, I don't, I'm not sure. Anyways, so this is how the, ls-a will list the files here and I want you to focus on these last four members here. So z, you can see for example that here the, the capital letters and the lowercase letters are mixed and so we have z as the first letter and e, s and u are the next ones. But if I and I can just change these variables on the fly. So I say lc collate equals hu underscore hu. So to use uh, the uh, Hungarian, maybe hu underscore hu dot utf8. And so this one will set this variable and then we will call the ls dash a command. And now you can see that these last uh, four items are ordered in a different order because in Hungarian this ZS combination is considered one letter and this ZS letter should be always put after the letter Z. So even though if we would use the English one it's always going like letter by letter and then S is before U as you can see here but in Hungarian this combination counts as a different letter so this is for example what kind what so even the behavior of a basic command such as uh, the ls command can be changed by the local. And I think if I just uh, use c, then things are even more uh, different because this will just use kind of the uh, binary value of these uh, characters. So you can see that the uh, uppercase, so the uh, capital letters are before the lowercase letters. So this is kind of an interesting thing about locals. And so you can get some more information if you are more interested from the ArchWiki or the manual for local. Here it will describe all the all these different um, things that can be so like example paper, what kind of paper sizes are the default. So anyways, so these are the things that a local can set up and you want to set your system up properly. So for example here we can uh, even um, find that um, and, um, yeah, user users can override so you can uh, for example, keep your language, so the uh, system-wide language as English, so all the log files will be saved in English and the root will operate in English language, but so the user can use a different language like it is written down here. Okay, so now that we've seen that, let's uh, see how can we utilize this uh, knowledge in our real life because well yeah we can mix and match and so we need to generate the usable locals so there are many many locals that are available and defined but we cannot use them by default first we need to generate from the base file and we can check out these uh, base files and those files are located at 
usr slash share slash i18n slash local uh, lowercase or lowercase and then you can just uh, list them out and well aren't there a lot <laughs> so let's uh, let's um, let's try to find if I just yeah I still cannot see on one screen but we can uh, let's let's find one let's just check out for example English some English something like maybe English I will check in GVIM so English and maybe AU as, a, as in the Australian English and so when we take a look at our GVIM here we can find what is in this uh, file so basically there is a some there are some comments here and um, I will just tell you that use this base category for these things and then copy the British English and copy this one for the uh, collate so for the uh, alphabetical order what are the uh, currency symbol for example is AUD and this is the short symbol we use this decimal point and this is the thousand separator and uh, for example these are the short names of the day these are the long names of the day and so on and uh, so forth we can find these informations in these base files or if I go for a more complicated one for just uh, for fun in the Hungarian one there are <laughs> So let's uh, go back to the top. I already opened it first. That's why I didn't start from the top. The top. So here we can see that this also so <laughs> basically describes the collation. What is what should be the order of the uh, organizing of letters, and then it defines this organizing of these different letters like the N Y, L Y, and S Z and T Y. So all these like. Uh, Hungarian double letters how they are defined here and then uh, we can see that this is like reorder reorder like this reorder like that so this is very interesting it uh, basically defines these uh, localization things in a human readable text file even though <laughs> it's not really easy to read it if you don't understand but you can see like the reorder after reorder after and all these things and uh, well yeah here monetary like the currency symbols you can see that the decimal point is the comma thousand separator is the dot and these are the abbreviations of the days and and then like months date formats so basically all these things that are specific to the Hungarian language are defined in these text files this is very like a Unix philosophy to keep this kind of information in a human readable format and so we need to define which one we would like to use and for that let's uh, go back to the uh, slideshow and we can specify which one we want to use oops go back okay so we can specify those in the local.gen file which uh, for that let's do that in our uh, virtual machine if I can find my virtual machine window here so we need to edit do I have Vim maybe I only have VI here so anyway so Vim etc slash local dot g e n yeah we have vim very good and here we can see that there is a list of all the available locals so someone already prepared this file for us but everything is commented out so 
you want to delete this uh, pound symbol from the uh, beginning or hash or whatever so the double cross symbol and you can just in vim you can use the uh, like the what is this the slash slash symbol this is the slash symbol <laughs> not backslash regular slash and maybe type in en for uh, english press enter and n letter n will go to the next occurrence and so in my case uh, it's preferable to use the utf versions utf8 versions i generally use american english but i had some trouble so some of my applications namely audacity audacity does not work with english language setup if you don't have the british english activated which is very weird so i have I have out, uh, uncommented in, in uh, ENGB and ENUS, the UTF-8 uh, versions, and I will also look for HU. I want the Hungarian version to be uncommented, and I will also look for Korean and uncomment that one too, and save with WQ. And now the next command is going to be the local dash gen command. So the local dash gen command is a part of, uh, I think, what is it part of? I think it is part of the um, glibc uh, library, but we can easily check that from our console. So, and Pacman dash q o backtick which local dash gen backtick and is owned by yeah glibc and based on that you can find glibc package on the arch wiki and you can find in the repository the local gen basically it's going uh through all the lines in that file which is defined here so the local the gen file this script will go through every line and if the line is not starting with this hash symbol so the line is not commented then it will check if it is it a valid local and if it is a valid local it will generate it with the local def command and the local def command is this binary program I tried to take a look at the uh, C source code but I don't understand it but you can check what it does it basically what it does is just reads like some input files and then makes a, a file that can be used by the local functions in the C library that's that's what it does let's uh, not make our lives too much more complicated so we can just use the local dash gen command to generate uh, these locals like, and we will just do that in our virtual machine so local dash gen and you can see now it's generating locals uh, uh, what is it great britain united states hungary korea and it's generated all these and now we can define these uh, these locals to be used so for example we can specify the system-wide interface language here in the etc slash local dot file and then specify the default system-wide keyboard layout in etc slash vconsole.conf and so there are many ways to do that you can just uh, open a new file with vim or you can just echo something into a file so let's uh, do we want uh, the language as english so if we we will have to say this following state this following here key map equals and language equals so language equals that will be basically the system-wide language and this will be the system-wide keyboard layout in these two files 
let's uh, let's do that. So I can say echo and say key map. Now first lang equals n equals n underscore us dot utf dash eight and put it in a file at slash etc slash local dot conf and then I can echo key map which is you know key map is my thing because I don't like the uh, American <laughs> keyboard layout so I will yeah, no, key map is just the hu I think that is uh, different from that we already talked about the key maps in a previous video when we set up the keyboard layout for the uh, installation medium so we have to use that it's not going to use the uh, same locale it will use that and you can check out that video pconsole.conf we just have to mention it here because this is also part of the localization so we can check Yeah, okay. And also V console. Yeah, that one is also written. Very good. So if I boot up, if we boot up this uh, system, these uh, default settings will be alive and will be working that way. So if I want to show you how it works on actually my own system, then I can show you my etc slash local dot conf file and you can see that the English language is defined here but numeric and time and monetary and paper and measurement are set as uh, Hungarian so these are things I could add like the LC collate if I wanted to use the uh, Hungarian version for organizing like the what is it uh, the alphabetical order or something like that we could do that you can do that for if you want to but you know it's just a personal preference if you are American you will just use the American English for everything probably anyways but if you speak like uh, if your English is just your second language I think it is good to keep the main system language in English because if you speak English well enough to listen to my videos then you probably speak English well enough to actually uh, look for uh, problems and solutions for your problems and it is much easier to find solution for a specific um, for a specific uh, error messages in English than in any other language so I think keeping the system language in English is a good idea maybe if you have someone else using your computer who does not speak English you can specify their user interface in their preferred language based on the um, arch wiki here so you can add, uh, add in their home directory another local.conf which will um, overwrite the uh, system setting for that specific user okay so I think I talked in great lengths and depths about this kind of basic localization that you can do on your system when you are setting it up and I hope this video was informative enough for you and check out the playlist subscribe to the channel give a thumbs up if you find these kind of topics interesting and of course leave a comment if you have any questions or anything to say down below and I will see you in the next video bye bye